you have an obligation as a leader to protect all people. And it's very simple to say, spend the money. Well, when you're spending the money, the next question you should ask, whose money and what will be the impact on those people? I will defend the senior citizen. I will defend the working class. I will defend their homes. I will defend their communities. I will defend their children with every an inch of my breath. I think that's what I was elected for, to do less I would be ashamed of myself. Thank you. Mr. Spallone, you ought to be ashamed. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mr. Spallone. I think, I think for those of us who are trying to follow your remarks, oftentimes it was very difficult to tell what you were talking about, but one message did come out loud and clear. One message came out loud and clear. It's election time, and the election is on, and Mr. Spallone is gonna make the city council meetings his early debates. Well, Mr. Spallone, I'm going to ask that you spare the rest of our colleagues our debates, because we'll have plenty of them in the course of our campaign. But I think this does reveal somewhat about your motives and your operating in elected office. <laughs> you here tonight indulged in name calling. You called me a liar by implication. By implication, by implication, you called me a coward. And I demand that your supporters remain ruly, Mr. Spallone, or we'll have them ejected. By implication, you called me a coward, Mr. Spallone. And I think it's disgraceful, because there's been a lot of cowardly behavior among elected officials here, and the chief coward has been you. You have... You have ducked and you have run every time a difficult decision needed to be made, Mr. Spallone. You seek to point the, figure at the, the finger at the judge. You now conveniently seek to point fingers at me so that your political ambition, Mr. Spallone, can be satisfied. You, Mr. Spallone, are a shameless demagogue. And no one has done more to hurt this city in the past 18 months than you. But there is a chance for you to redeem yourself, Mr. Spallone, because in the next few weeks, the rhetoric will have to stop and the action will have to be taken. And we will have to decide how we're going to fund the court orders, including the $25 million for schools. You know it's not going to mean a 20 or 30% tax increase. You say that to scare the people. However, if you duck the issue, and your colleagues choose to duck the issue, and we've got to find $25 million out of a budget of about 150, you can see that's going to be a 20% cut in services. And that will be 20% probably across the board. Police, fire, sanitation. That is reality, Mr. Spallone, and I know it's difficult for you to face it. I've never seen you face reality. I just hope you can limit your rhetoric so we can get some constructive work here, refrain from name calling, and try to conduct your campaign outside these chambers rather than in. Excuse me. You raised some interesting questions. Unfortunately, you were unable to understand the substance of what I was trying to tell you. That's true. And that's tragic, because I thought you were a learned man. I don't think this was political. I think the issue has been going on for a long time. 
And if you're telling me tonight we have this issue and it's a very political issue and we're having this battle because it's politicking, that's nonsense. You know it, I know it, the city knows it. <laughs> Simply, I have a commitment. I raised the issues. You should have examined them, but you didn't. You played your same rhetoric again. Threat, fear, loss of jobs. Well, you're gonna just try and do it. You're gonna try, and I'm gonna try and stop you. And I've been doing a pretty good job for six years because it's people like you that gave me a very difficult time because it's the votes that you made that took away the opportunity for me to defend the citizens of this city on many occasions. And I can go to those votes, and I will go to the people with the votes. So if you want to talk politics, we will play the politics. You, my friend, made some serious votes. And you know, those votes count as well as the vote tonight because you brought us to this place. And I tried to prevent you from being in this place. But you were not smart enough to stay out of it. You had to get into it. You engineered it. You paid the price. You made the mistake. You forced the city into bankruptcy. It's not Hank Spallone because I said no. And the reason it's not me is because if you read the Second Circuit, it very simply says, the consent decree, which you engineered. You! And they based it on your consent decree. That's what bankrupt the city. Your vote. Now you go around telling everyone it's Hank Spallone. How sad a campaign promise you prevent. How could you do a thing like that and talk about campaigns? You! You gave him the vehicle. You provided him the weapon. I said no. And you know what? Apparently there has to be something going for me in the Supreme Court. Because a couple of hours before I was supposed to go to jail, predicated on your consent decree and my innocence and not voting for it, the Supreme Court saw fit to hear our case. And we will be heard in November. And whatever you talk about, the law is the law. The law is the law, and I have the right in November to be heard, and I will be heard with my colleagues. And I'm telling you, and I'm telling Judge Sands, and nobody's going to do anything until after that decision, because that's fair, and America's a fair country. You know, if you were talking to a person that didn't have any options, was left out with no tools, no weaponry, no laws to depend on, no ordinances, you would be correct. But they're all here, my friend. All those issues. You talk of building two new schools and, and, and you're going to lay off people if I don't build the new schools. Well, I'm going to ask you a simple question. What about my old schools? Don't they count? What are we, in some kind of madness? We tear down schools, build new schools, and then we bankrupt the city. And by the way, on the percentages that I raised in the newspapers several months ago, you were quoted at 20 and 30 percent in the Herald Statesman on increases in taxes. I doubt you, it. You doubt it. Well, remember it, because I'm telling you it's a fact. See, I have a good memory. Yours is a problem. And that's why we have big problems. You can't remember. And if you would remember, you would know what you said. So when you start these cockamamie ideas and threats, there is some substance in what I talk about. To tear down schools that exist, to build new ones, to bankrupt the city. And let me tell you this, your $25 million will not build two new schools. And then you will come back to the people and say, I need more money. Will it ever end? And then you'll say, well, we need more money and we have no options, we'll have to lay off everybody. Because you'll run out of options. As long as you play with Sands, you'll be a loser. And you've been playing with him, and he's made you a loser. Thank you.
Fortunately, there'll be fortunately there'll be other voices that will also be heard in November. I very much look forward to that. Mr. Condon. Thank you. Uh, I uh, hoped, Mr. Spallone, that when I got on this side of the rail, the proceedings would seem a little more mature. And what, how sadly, how sadly mistaken I was. I'd like to uh, make a request before I uh, put my views on this uh, item forward that uh, Mr. Spallone, Mr. Longo, Mr. Fagan, Mr. Chima, Mr. Oxman, and the mayor join with me in establishing a different sort of uh, monument than the one that's been discussed about being erected for Charlie Cola. Uh, I'd like to go on record uh, saying that we uh, uh, favoring a monument outside the city hall, but I think that there's a different type of monument uh, that could also be erected to Mr. Cola. And uh, I think that uh, in addition to whatever physical monument we construct, it would be fitting to create a monument uh, based on a, uh, a civil behavior in the council chamber, based on respect for uh, opposition views, based on a willingness, based on a willingness, Mr. Spallone, to hear each other out. You'll find the door to my office locked, Mr. Spallone. I think that. I think that one of the things that has made America the country it is, and you're fond of referring to that, Mr. Spallone, is the way we conduct ourselves in public. We can disagree. We can disagree on issues. We can disagree on issues without interrupting one another. I ju just a minute, please, Mr. Condon. Mr. Fernandez, could you please attempt to keep some civility in order here so the councilman can be heard? I would, I, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor, I would suggest that Mr. Spallone make that request. I think it would be most effective if he asked his people, if he asked his people to simply give us the courtesy of being able to conduct the city's proceedings in a civil, in a civil manner. I think that's, I think that's also applicable to people on the other side of the issue. I think it's incumbent upon all citizens in this city to behave with a sense of maturity, a sense of respect for one another's viewpoints. So having said that, having said that, I'd like to answer, if I may, uh, some of the, or, or at least address some of the points raised. Uh, Councilman Fagan uh, uh, pointed out that the reason for forming this committee was to send a message to the judge that there is no consent uh, left on this council. Uh, Mr. Fagan, with all due respect, if you think we need to form a committee to send that message, then you haven't been listening to these proceedings. I think that the judge has got the message. There's not a whole lot of consent in this room. Uh, Mr. Longo, you said this was not an issue of compliance or defiance. I know that there has been some question as to whether or not uh, you believe that you were under duress when you voted. I don't know what your current position is. I know that, that uh, you were on national TV answering the, the uh, question of one of the city residents as to whether or not you were under duress, and I believe you responded twice to that question that you were not. I don't know, though, that it's, it's, uh, it's pertinent today. I do think that the, uh, the issue that we're disregarding the rights of the people we're here to represent uh, begs the question, do we owe the people we're here to represent something other than our vote? And I think we do. I think we owe them our judgment. I don't think that we have to vote, and I think that this, this can be told to the, to the people in the, on, on the side of uh, compliance, some of whom said that Pete Chima should vote simply because his constituents wanted it that way. Let me say that we owe our constituents our judgment as well as our vote. That's true now. It was true when the consent decree was signed. It'll be true every day in the city. Mr. Spallone, for a man with so many questions, I've never seen anyone with so few answers. There's no doubt in my mind that you have possibly raised more questions. I'll grant you some of them good questions, but more questions than I've ever seen raised by a public official who never came back with any answers. Now, there's something called the Freedom of Information Act, and if you're finding that the city manager's uh, people or the city manager or the mayor or Judge Sand or a number of other people are being uncooperative in your many, many requests for information, that you simply invoke the Freedom of Information Act and go get those answers yourself. Stop tying up the city proceedings. 
You know, and, and may I suggest that, that the, the, the notion that somehow those principles that you advocate or those steps that you advocate were those that were, America was built on and that for anybody else to question that is somehow unpatriotic or somehow you know, un-American or somehow off the mark reminds me of another figure who also played very strongly to a crowd. His name was Joe McCarthy. Eventually, his own crowd turned on him. I think, that, I think that many people in this chamber forget that the city of Yonkers does not end at that back wall. There are nearly 200,000 people in this city, and regardless of how they feel on the issue of compliance or defiance, many of them are disgusted, absolutely embarrassed by the going-ons in this room. People feel they can't come down even if they agree with you. They think they can't come down. People are embarrassed by the low level of civility that goes on in this room. And I think that you know as well as I that all you have to do is turn to your supporters who come to this chamber just as the mayor can turn to his supporters or any other councilman can turn to theirs and ask that people treat each other with respect. Sir, you ought to be ashamed for playing to that worst instinct. Thank Excuse you, me, I have the right to speak back. Mr. Spallone. I think when we start to engage in mud slinging, slinging, you were the first one to bring it here. We have never had that kind of thing. If you're questioning my questions, yes, I've used the Freedom of Information Act and I haven't received the information. And if you're so concerned about information and questions, why don't we get Judge Sands, your friend, because your group has been, or has had close relationships with him, isn't that true? Well, you don't know, you better believe you do know. I believe, I Some believe of you asked me a question, uh, please, may I answer that Matt, question? You just wait, Mr. I Mayor, waited for you, young man. You, you Mr. asked Spallone, me a question. Wait, Mr. Wait, Mr. Spallone, wait, Mr. Spallone, yes or no? There's no other questions, Mr. Yes Spallone. Yes or no? Now you've ask got a chance. Yes question. or no? All right, hold it, hold it, hold it. Yes or no? You ask a lot of questions, now you've got a chance to get an answer to one of the questions. Allow Mr. Condon to answer. Give me the answer. Mr. Spallone, I have never met Judge Sand. Has any of the group that you belong to, Sands. any of the group that you I belong to, meet with Judge Sands at any time? I think Mr. Condon asked Any the of the group that you belong I to and comply? Would, I don't understand the question, Mr. Spallone. Has Did anybody, anybody, anybody comply? Has because anybody, no one might have complied. Did any one of them ever meet with? I believe that the people, any people in the various groups that make up comply. I just Let me answer the question. Let yes or no? Mr. Spallone. It's a yes or no Mr. Spallone. Spallone. Mr. Spallone. Mr. Spallone. Mr. Spallone. Mr. Spallone. The day, you know, you, the day you restrict you know it's true, Mr. Spallone. But you know it's true, young man. The day you restrict yourself to single word answers will be the day the rest of us will too, Mr. Spallone. Let me now say let me answer the question. Let me answer the question, sir. Let me answer the question. 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 This is not a game. Let me answer the question. We're not here infants. I'm calling three of you in. Thank you.